Mr. Padmanabhan, HOD, Boiler Basic Design, Dusan Power Systems, India, Chennai. This session will elaborate on Dusan Power System India's recent successful projects on providing energy efficient enhanced r and solutions as a very cost effective clean coal technology solution for the operating units. To introduce Mr. R. Padmanabhan, he is working as DGM at Dusan Engineering Center at Chennai. DEC is the boiler engineering arm of Dusan Power Systems India Private Limited. He heads the Boiler Basic Design Department of DPSI, which is responsible for boiler performance and process, equipment engineering of boiler auxiliaries. He has been working with Dusan for the past seven years and has overall 22 years of experience in different boiler technologies and industries and has worked with major majors such as Dusan, Babcock, Foster & Wheeler Energy and Thermax. And he has also worked at USA and UK, working directly at the headquarters of these companies. May I kindly request you, sir, to take over the session. I'd like uh, to again present to you a subject that I'm going to do is, because we saw some of the company slides, you know, to promote the company, we generally present the slides which are uh, always done. So we can maybe squeak, quickly pass through them. There are some extra slides. And then quickly go into the R and M part. Uh, we can have a detailed question and answer session. Any questions that you want uh, me to answer, or whatever. So again, it's about the company. Um, I'll reiterate what uh, I tried to explain. It was it was not definitely sufficient for uh, me. Uh, the 25 minutes or something that I had was not sufficient for me to talk in detail. I just randomly said certain things. But here is to present that uh, Babcock is a company with a very long standing. It has got very strong roots. Uh, it, has, uh, it is uh, more than 100 years old, as you can see. Uh, it's the one is when the B&W was formed and then uh, the journey has started then. And recently, uh, not to even just go through them, basically, uh, if I have to put it in a nutshell, like you met me somewhere and you have to ask me, what uh, this company is all about. Uh, the Babcock company uh, was uh, one as B&W in the Americas and then to cater to the, uh, the UK market, uh, a company was set up in London which was B&W UK and then for about 10 years uh, they worked together and then eventually they got split as uh, being Babcock and Wilcox and then just Babcock. And then this company was uh, in existence and it was doing many boilers uh, across the world. And then uh, one fine day when things turned around that uh, Mitsui wanted to uh, buy the uh, company and that's how uh, Mitsui Babcock uh, came into existence. Mitsui is a shipping company which was majorly into shipping and they had nothing to do with the boilers. And uh, they had some inclination uh, to power so they wanted to... Uh, probably do a day, do a M and a and they got together as uh, Mitsi Babcock. That existed for only some time, uh, for about, I think, something like about 12 years and then um, the company was uh, transformed to the, the Dozan, who were like hitherto uh, a Alstom licensee, uh, decided to have a technology of their own and Dozan showed interest in buying those shares from Mitsui and Mitsui and Dozan together have done many projects outside India. So they know each other at a very high level, at the owner's level. So they wanted uh, to uh, investigate in whether they can buy and then that thing. Uh, to cut the story, the story short on the turbine side, I think Skoda Power, you all know, um, uh, the Czech company which uh, is involved in the manufacturing of power plant, the uh, steam turbines. We acquired, that, the Duzan acquired that company also very recently. And uh, Lenges is the arm that I didn't mention uh, due to the short of time, shortage of time. It's another company based in Germany, which is a very old company. Again, 1928 uh, is when it was formed. And then recently, uh, Lenges was also bought over uh, by uh, uh, Power Systems as a complete lineup from boiler to turbine to uh, all the uh, air pollution control equipment as well in one umbrella. So this company is now consolidating into uh, a major uh, power uh, company. So we'll go to uh, the various 
I think this I spoke and you can just take a look and then we are now Luzon Power Systems and Luzon Heavy, we are all uh, currently in the fray and these are the three, uh, the UK and the India now. And uh, we'll now see uh, some more slides probably on, uh, as I said to you before, uh, Duzan lenses is now boiler and air con pollution control. You'll ask me again what a wire is saying boiler. Uh, lenses has the circulating fluid aspect technology which you are aware. And uh, lenses and uh, it was originally Lurgi, Lurgi lenses. Now, this company was working uh, with PHL he is working with BHL, I should say, sorry. Uh, even now, they are uh, currently executing projects. Uh, one of the recent ones is uh, not very far from here. It's in Nye Valley, uh, the lignite wired CFB boiler, which is uh, getting commissioned and going through some minor issues uh, in some areas. Now, this company, Lenges, is now part of the Duzan family, and uh, we have got a CFB technology also. And currently, uh, Duzan in uh, Southeast Asian market and in Korea is uh, working with uh, uh, Foster Wheeler license currently, and that is going to end, and then this is going to start sometime soon. Now, again, the product lineup. I don't want to go much. Uh, AQCS, it's more of a lenses thing, and then boiler, uh, Duzan uh, power systems has its own uh, complete lineup of uh, equipment that we can supply to. Uh, as solutions to large and medium and small size power plants and boilers and then we have also capability to manufacture uh, the boiler, uh, the plant, power plant BOP equipment such as condensers, heaters and deaerators. So uh, it ranges from anything like uh, subcritical or supercritical to anything fossil and even biomass and uh, complete scope of engineering, manufacturing, erection, commissioning, after sales service and training uh, after the uh, serve, the uh, uh, handing over and retrofits. Uh, that's another business that uh, we are very actively involved in, in the UK and in India uh, and also other parts of the world. And we can supply the complete boiler island, DCS, SCR, FGD, ESP, uh, uh, which are all related to pollution control. Now these are worldwide uh, references in turbine, uh, so circulating fluid as void, boilers, you are seeing them in yellow, they are lenses uh, references and uh, first wheeler references also would be there. Uh, we have uh, the turbine experience shown, almost like 55 gigawatt of experience shown there and FGD it's in meter cube per hour, 38 million meter cube per hour and uh, waste to energy that's uh, several uh, million tons and uh, these are uh, some of the recent projects and in India uh, Mundra you know uh, is working in operation Sipat uh, 3 times 660 in operation and Raipur is uh, the verge of uh, being commissioned and uh, there are some issues but Kudgi and Lara in the very advanced stage of execution that's a picture of uh, the Raipur unit uh, which fires uh, very high ash uh, Indian coal and it's uh, the unit uh, supplied to GMR energy and it's a super critical unit and then Kudgi and Lara which I already mentioned that's uh, the picture of uh, the boiler. Uh, the Kudgi unit is going to be coming up in uh, the state of Karnataka and uh, the other one uh, Lara would be in Orissa. And uh, these two just uh, say that uh, we also got a recent uh, two times thousand megawatt uh, project uh, where the boiler is being supplied by us, turbine by us. One, um, it's for uh, the Komipo uh, Korean power generating company. And though it says ten more than ten gigawatt, it's actually slightly under, um, but it's close to ten gigawatt of uh, manufacturing capability. Uh, very. Uh, in and three strategic locations: India, Vietnam, and in Changwon, depending on where the uh, the pressure pot has to be delivered. So that's a benefit uh, the company has by doing so. And again, going back to uh, references, in India we have got several uh, installations. It starts uh, uh, as uh, 
whole as 1960 we have started the company Dozan Power Dozan Babcock Babcock was here uh, as UK BNW and uh, in the year UK BNW uh, year book 1927 there is a picture of Tata Iron and Steel uh, that's a boiler so it's a very prize position this picture for us to just show how long we have been and we have about 13 gigawatt of installation in India itself and that's a manufacturing unit which you see on the left hand side and uh, on the right hand side uh, it's actually the uh, the 12 torch welding machine uh, which you see there on the top so it's based in uh, chennai uh, near on the bangalore highway near punamalli and uh, we have got about 150 plus engineers who are working uh, and supporting all the global uh, Uh, business needs of engineering particularly in the boiler area in chennai and uh, the rest of project execution and the plant engineering and architectural engineering and piping uh, are all being handled from the gurgaon office so uh, again going back to warandam uh, we have uh, various options that we can speak about when you talk about clean coal technologies the subject here is uh, warandam because we chose to uh, project that as also a very important aspect uh, for uh, reducing the carbon footprint now there are ifs and buts when you say new power plant there are definitely ifs and buts and uh, there are some things which come in the way and uh, if it is not a government policy or government driven project uh, private projects are not kicking off and going forward so rndm is always there and uh, it's always going to Uh, reinstate the life of the boiler. It's going to improve the efficiency. It's going to make it more available. It's going to be making it simply more meaningful to operate that unit. So, besides this, one has to also look at uh, R&M in the way that it's got a very low efficiency to start with. These are units which are uh, probably running with very low efficiency first. So, the delta that you achieve. when you compare a subcritical and a supercritical instead of subcritical you are going for supercritical probably you are making a 2 to 1/2% uh, increase in your uh, plant cycle efficiency but uh, here probably it could be much more because you have gone below the bottom line i think there are some slides which will actually depict that uh, you can see that it's actually more than uh, the difference that we talk about a subcritical and a supercritical so let's make the units which are subcritical and aging uh, make prop work properly and then more efficiently and then uh, there is always possibility of the new units so again to bring back uh, your attention to this uh, slide it is to highlight that as much as what is just spoke a few minutes ago rndm is also going to put you into the same uh, margin as like something like a 15% increase uh, reduction in the co2 as much as what you would get from a subcritical to a supercritical so this is also to be uh, considered because there are two different uh, parallel streams but this should not be lost focus on now retrofitting uh, now uh, i think i spoke about this basically you have minimum expenditure uh, i think most projects a btg uh, renovation mod modernization project It's not costing more than. Uh, I'm talking about a unit which has ended. It has used up its life, basically 30 years, and now you are doing an R and M. Basically, all other things which are uh, needed for the plant is there. The approvals are in place. Everything is in place. Uh, most of the boiler and the steel and other things can be reused. Uh, the civil side absolutely reused. What you are going to do is modernize and re-equip and. Uh, uh have another 20 years so, so for that you have to make anyway an investment either new or old and then it becomes uh, much more convincing for somebody to think with only no hindrances uh, if i have to uh, if i have a running unit i have to also concentrate on ensuring that this is at full capacity and full capability than investing on another unit a new one and there are no road blocks not much of road blocks except what you create by on your own and uh, you can actually increase the uh, uh, the uh, with about 50 60% of what you would invest in a new unit you can actually have uh, a r and m done 
very neat R and R. And this is something I spoke about. Uh, there is a regulation in the Indian boiler uh, IBR code itself that uh, we'll have to consider. It prescribes basically. It, it's not mandatory, but it's definitely a prescription. Uh, and there is something also mandatory. After 25 years, uh, and these were uh, units which are having supreme temperature more than 400 degrees. RLA is uh, prescribed after 100,000 hours, and then after 25 years. For others, after 25 years. Now, again, when you say turbine R and M, uh, when you say R and M, you can say and turbine. Now, I think we spoke about this. Uh, we can do framework agreements. Uh, I think one classic example is uh, the NTP, NTPC and Alstom, uh, NASL is a very classic example. We can have long-term uh, alliances with companies. It will actually uh, give a lot of benefit to both the sites. It will give the benefit to the customer, also the, uh, the fellow who is entering into the agreement from the manufacturing side because you can have uh, via media approaches, you can have uh, access to uh, the staff and labor uh, and you can understand long-term requirements and the uh, Basically, you can create a, a kind of a sync between the two companies, and uh, which will be beneficial for both. And it'll also, if there is a bad news in the market and something is going down, it will also be affected by. Uh, it will also be affected on both the sides. It is not like I only take the pint. There is a policy change. As a boiler manufacturer, I might only be taking the change because there will be a price escalation or loss because of, uh, say. Uh, some change in the economy uh, that will not affect the uh, boiler manufacturer alone. It is also uh, going to affect the, uh, the person who has contracted him to uh, do the r &M. So it's good uh, to have alliances uh, and that will also set the focus. So these three phases we said we generally do the first assessment and then do the analysis and uh, the boiler redesign and then do the refurbishment. Now, what are the typical issues? Uh, we have got, uh, you know, plants are operating beyond design life, very common, and changing modes of operation. Uh, today everyone talks about sliding uh, pressure to improve the uh, efficiency and enhance the life of the pressure parts. Uh, we also talk about uh, operation flexibilities, uh, which are not there in the old units, which come with the r &M. Then the fuel uh, definitely would have uh, lost uh, by 20, 30 percent. The GC most cases would be down in any unit that you go across and see. So they anyway need an upgrade. And uh, the corrosion and erosion, you know, it's part of the boiler anyway. So these are the areas we look at uh, to see the damage mechanism. In the case of free, you want to see at very high pressure and very high temperature zones and see how it has affected those areas. We have to study them in detail because those are areas for uh, 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 repair in terms of creep. And the fatigue is always there and most parts where it's uh, due to either thermal or mechanical conditions, the fatigue can happen. Erosion to all the convective surfaces which are exposed to the gas path. Corrosion, um, it can be due to the water side, can be due to the gas. So uh, it's always there to, uh, to be studied in detail. And uh, operator and reader tubes. Now, possible causes are for uh, these uh, to happen. Basically, uh, the metal loss uh, due to corrosion, oxidation, acid attack, and even oxygen pitting. So, these are the very uh, common things uh, that you can see uh, in the drums and headers. Now, when you have expanded tubes, uh, low, some of the boilers have very low pressure of 10, 100, 110 bar cycle. Until then, you can see tubes, banks which uh, have expanded tubes. So the weeping and uh, the caustic embrittlement uh, caused out of it is an uh, area to look for. And then superheater and reaped tubes, uh, what, what types of damage are uh, common or basically it can be metallurgical, it can be due to metal loss, it can be oxidation, uh, erosion or corrosion uh, are the possible, possible causes for the metal loss. Uh, furnace boiler bank, uh, not so common in the very large utility boilers, but there are some 
small utility boilers in the 67.5 range which are old. Uh, typically we had some in boilers like Talcher where we have uh, done an R&M and that to, I didn't mention this about uh, Talcher because probably most people know that we have done this project uh, very successfully and we keep getting letters from this customer NTPC uh, once in a way even without us asking them saying that we are very happy to have a plant load factor of over 100, 103, 105. We don't even ask for these letters. They keep sending out of sheer happiness. So that's the pain uh, can be seen only by the person who has operated those units at 45 and 50 percent availability and uh, uh, PLF. So that's the kind of uh, transformation that can happen actually when you do a proper r and and uh, get over them. And then if you see the spray, uh, there are some cracks which are possible. Spray temperatures generally go through thermal stresses because you are heating and then cooling. That's where you are cooling the uh, steam. Now, uh, piping, depending on the temperature, we have to study whether it is for creep and fatigue or uh, for other causes. Air preter, acid dew point corrosion, very common effect. Erosion will be there at the uh, inlet banks. If this I am talking about a tubular aerator uh, generally uh, and also metal loss is applicable as a dew point is also applicable for the other type but when I talk about erosion I am talking about mainly the tubular type. Some of the old units 210 megawatts also had tubular aerators. If some of you didn't know uh, the old units have 210 megawatts also had tubular aerators and that's because the technology of uh, the uh, regenerative was not so famous then. Uh, they have tubular aerators. So when you do a R and M, you are necessarily going to also do a R and M in that area only, and that's why I think one of the slides we showed about a modular uh, aerator. And uh, ducts and structures basically uh, structures would survive to a great extent. It's only the weather attack, but ducts uh, definitely go through a lot of uh, erosion and corrosion, and uh, they have also a thermal fatigue because. Uh, of the cooling and heating that they go through and uh, they would need repair work. Now this picture is uh, to actually uh, we need to very important thing is to first assess what happened, what impact. This is not something like you do an r and plain and bland for each uh, boiler that uh, you are going to. So you have to first for each boiler it may be different. Some boilers would have necessarily operated in a very nice operating regime not going through uh, uh, situations where they have operated well and over the temperature limits. So when you uh, do that, you will actually can come up with a, a creep damage and fatigue damage. You, based on the data, you can see where the unit was operating, whether it was in the safe zone or the lines that you see uh, beyond that if you are operating, probably you are in a very unsafe area. And then you seeing that it is uh, for a uh, 22 grade material, 2.5 chrome, 2 quarter chrome material that uh, they have categorized this particular branch junction to be not okay uh, to be operating in a two shift operation. They don't want. If somebody suggests, we will say we have to do some modification to that area. If it has to be a two shift operation, which means necessarily uh, the unit will go down to about 30 percent load in the night and then stay and then come back very quickly to uh, the full load in the morning when the uh, load is picking up. So two shift operation is a no-no for such a case. Or you have to attend to that particular part in the r &M and then address that. And then you have to also understand what kind of margins uh, were there in the original material. Where have you operated the unit with respect to what margins you have on the uh, because of the stress it went through and uh, that will actually clearly tell if uh, the yield strength is so much and you are like far far below you are fine uh, that material is going to withstand few more years and uh, beauty is uh, some of the old material are much better than what the new materials have come up with. So there is a constant change that uh, the uh, refreshing and renewal that the tube companies do to actually they derate some of the if you uh, see P91 for example they have derated of course P91 deration is for a different purpose but this normally happens and 
Yeah. You have to actually make a plot of uh, number of starts, you know, how many hours the boiler has run, uh, has run, and it will purely dependent on the owner, how much of information he has logged and kept and preserved. That will actually determine. And in the developed world, you know, it's very, very easy. What these pictures are very relevant actually to the developed world. You won't get uh, much of this data with uh, units within India. It's very difficult to get. It'll have to be on hearsay and some meager records we have to work on. So if the unit is, uh, if the information is available as to actually how many hours were spent uh, in what condition, uh, that will actually, the survey will help us uh, make the right decision. And then you can make uh, time uh, histories. Uh, and the temperature behavior, what happened actually, and uh, you see uh, here you are having actually uh, at uh, how many hours at what temperature, that's a bell curve kind of a thing shown there. And in the first case, it's much below the design, so you are fine. You don't have to worry about those areas. And uh, you can see how much it has drifted, and uh, from suppose it has crossed. The design, it, you know how much it has drifted and how much damage has already been caused to some areas and then you can decide to replace them with new uh, material. And uh, because everything, you'll have to justify the owner. Owner will say, well, it's easy, R&M, the easiest way to just replace all. But the idea is to optimize that and that's why all this. So, uh, also to see uh, what fatigue um, has done, uh, has to be studied. Uh, how much of thermal shocks are there uh, in the header? Headers are uh, particularly to show, to prone to thermal shocks because the tubes which are uh, basically the tubes, adjacent tubes can have different temperatures. Suddenly, uh, the temp also the temperatures uh, change would affect the thick wall tubes, thick wall pipes much more than the small wall. So, in fact, in our techno in the Babcock technology, there is a particular feature that we ensure to ensure that we don't have, we minimize the thick wall tubes. I think in one of the presentations that I have kept separately, I will show you what that is. And uh, this was with respect to the NTPC uh, project. I think we spoke about this initially also. That's a... a, a SES analysis report which has uh, told how uh, that header would actually be uh, behaving with this kind of a history. So it will lead you to making proper conclusions. Uh, it's called the cumulative damage technique. Uh, I'm not expert in r and but uh, this is something I know that uh, there's a cumulative damage technique which is acceptable in the industry, you depict information in this format, which is time, which is dependent on time, temperature and uh, the stress, you uh, can make some reasonable solutions, uh, decisions on what to repair, where to repair and uh, what uh, kind of r is required for which part. And so uh, some amount of, uh, you can do some instrumentation. Sometimes you don't know certain things. You can increase, uh, in, like, you know, you can create some locations where, identify some locations where you actually monitor the temperature now from in future. You are in doubt now. So you can create, uh, you know, additionally add some metal temperature thermocouples to ensure that, uh, like, you know, uh, and you have to monitor, inspect them, and then you have to confirm that the predicted behavior is being achieved and then you have made a reasonably good conclusion. So you can add instrumentation to uh, uh, help your uh, arriving at the solution. Then uh, use of latest alloys uh, sometimes is a good solution, there is something better in the market now available which will solve the problem so it's probably better to employ that as an engineering solution uh, rather than living with uh, the original one now what i talked about uh, in the previous powerpoint on uh, the 
testing of uh, testing and the modern tools that are available. In fact, uh, this is all uh, very complicated and uh, know how related. Um, I can only give the kind of uh, uh, the headlines of what actually is done. You do ultrasonics, automated NDT systems, uh, arsenic weld inspections. What they see the weld, take a portion of the weld, inspect and actually see how uh, that joint has behaved and how, how uh, it has survived. Now, looking at the weld, uh, they can actually make a decision on uh, what kind of uh, uh, turbulence that particular weld has gone through and it will help them arrive at certain decisions. And the modeling, computer modeling yes, is always possible for you What's to... What is the difference between astronautic weld inspection and radiography? Radiography. We well, can do weld inspection on radiography. Well, uh, they are not looking at the quality of the weld there. They are looking at the chemistry, I think. It is not the quality of the weld per se. So, right. So, uh, and there are uh, other techniques such as non-invasive inspection. I actually don't know what that means, but uh, non-invasive inspection, pre-service and in-service inspections, leak detections and uh, acoustic emissions. So, these are the techniques, uh, very uh, state-of-the-art technologies. Our company can uh, come and do to actually assess uh, the damage and to predict what is the... Uh, corrective action or what RNM should be done. Now, there is one more uh, uh, technique. Uh, it takes a snapshot of the entire 360 degrees in all the directions and then you can uh, actually know uh, to the position accuracy of 6 mm, less than 6 mm at 50 meters uh, distance. Thermal imaging is a uh, uh, you can see the picture there on the top on the right hand side. It's actually uh, tell what temperatures are uh, likely. When you, depending on the color, you can actually tell what temperatures are there. So you actually know how the boiler is burning, combusting now, and uh, where the probable areas are. You can quickly go this area probably I want to concentrate more rather than spending more time in areas that I don't want. So thermal imaging helps in uh, aiding the inspection in a much faster way. These are some of the uh, tools that uh, as a designer uh, the engineers use within the company. Uh, heat and mass balance engine, BW Hot, it's a backup program to actually assess the temperatures, how the temperatures are when you are firing the burner at different excess air conditions, how at different load conditions, how the temperature profile is and how much is a pickup in the furnace panels and the flow pattern itself. And then you've got uh, stress analysis uh, which can be done in detail to actually tell uh, how uh, the header is getting stressed. You can get a picture of what will be the maximum stress and what point it will be uh, to be able to predict what is to be done as part of the r &D. CFD particularly very common in uh, the uh, the W5 units which are which is a middle one that you are seeing there very common and again this is to optimize basically for the optimization of what solutions you are going to come up with and uh, making reasonable judgments on predictions basically optimizing the predictions in terms of emissions and what uh, to guarantee this again our test facility, it has got a wide range of uh, capability, you can test wide range of holes, you can see bituminous, low volatiles, of course not anthracites on a wall fight or on a burner like that. So you can also test two stage, two stage combustion which means burner plus the overfire air. We have this, uh, some, uh, this burner facility has also been used to do a oxy fuel firing which is a very very uh, uh, challenging task. Because uh, to combust something in oxygen and to control the combustion is a nightmare uh, which our company has done and studied how uh, the furnace actually behaves and the flame behavior in oxy fuel. Also this uh, unit can uh, do biomass firing which is very very common now. 
the most sought after fuel in the entire europe if it is fossil uh, if it is anything solid fuel is uh, biomass because you are able to reduce the footprint there are a lot of incentives from the company to uh, increase the percentage of biomass firing that you are doing and uh, these are some of the uh, laboratory uh, facilities that we have you can actually analyze the fuel we can analyze the chemistry of any material we can do mechanical testing we can do the non destructive testing and our metallurgy and welding uh, we can study the welding actually in detail and give a report and then emissions of course uh, which is very very important and the subject is on emissions today i think we uh, had a few slides about uh, the bandel r and f we are going in detail now uh, to showcase this because it's our reason project nothing but uh, that uh, we would like to do more and more of such plants in fact we have a fantastic rapport with the customer that all they are probably going to consider as for uh, more uh, projects in the future they have four 82.5 megawatts uh, units also supplied by bnw and we have currently worked on the 210 megawatt unit and uh, the erection is on at site currently and uh, it's a turbine uh, lmz turbine uh, russian and uh, we have done some modifications to the turbine as well as part of the r and m and to improve the heat rate and to improve the uh, efficiency and so uh, <coughs> we'll see what uh, those are so 700 tons per hour capacity currently at final super heat outlet that's not changing uh, for the new boiler also and uh, 210 megawatt has actually become now 250 megawatt it has got babcock e mills e mills are different from the vertical spindle mills for those who don't know uh, basically the e mills have two granulating rings one or the one on top of the other with set of balls kept in between and then they go in a uh, circular motion the pole gets ground in between the two uh, the wheels and the the ball which is it's like a uh, roll of the uh, ball bearing you can imagine that to be kind of a ball bearing situation <coughs> so this was the uh, unit when it was designed in 1982 and when we actually went to study what was happening this was a scenario and then that led to uh, making the specifications to uh, make the boiler up to uh, 215 megawatt and all the changes basically 3300 is a fuel efficiency is down by 5% straight 5 6% straight turbine side you are increasing so this uh, is going to have overall if you see it's going to probably bring about 8 to 10% net effect i'm not talking percentage points uh, 32 becoming 42 but straight away 32 becoming 35 or 30 or 29.5 becoming 32 so that's about 10% increase and 10% reduction in the emissions every second that boiler will run so that's the part we are driving and to add it to that you now these things can happen faster and cheaper than the new boiler uh, facilities availability is down 60% so that's reducing the carbon footprint but then you are also not generating and generating some other plant which is polluting so uh, we had known uh, these as the most problem areas uh, the ash content in the coal uh, and we know that uh, it has been uh, put to severe uh, high ash coal firing uh, there has been deterioration in the pressure parts which was leading uh, to the oendam report the uh, rla report asking us to uh, change some of the water wall panels and then uh, the trap system was not able to cope up because there's a fuel chain there's extra leakage ingress of air and uh, the id fan would not cooperate esp was doing very bad absolutely bad as i said it was like 400 mg 350 to 400 milligrams as against what is now after r and m would be 90 in the same place uh, replacing the uh, the entire esp almost uh, literally and uh, the heat rate was originally uh, 2092 when it was designed and then uh, turbine heat rate actually became uh, 2298 when they actually went and tested 
so that was a kind of increase but this is i am seeing it to be a straight to 10% increase in the heat rate on the turbine side on the plant it's also uh, more than 10% that's the 15% reduction in the carbon footprint that we are talking about 2424 versus 2872 in the plant is a change and in fact the guarantee is not 2424 it's much lesser than that i think we have given 2345 or something i'm i'm not remembering but it's 2300 plus so that's much lesser than 2800 we are looking at a 20% almost 15% reduction in the uh, carbon footprint so and at a much lesser cost in addition you are increasing the capacity uh, of the plant to some extent you are increasing the availability reliability and also uh, a life you are given life for the next 20 years to that plant the plf was very low i think less than 70% i uh, remember uh, 70% uh, was okay on uh, the uh, economizer part that is mentioned that frequent uh, tube failures in the economizer bank they would stop the unit and then they have to cut that portion and then restart so the availability was going down and sinking now the objectives were obviously to improve to reduce the uh, nox levels and of course uh, co2 would automatically happen because of the improved efficiency uh we were looking at reducing the uh also the suspended particle matter the only area where we didn't probably had to do anything or we didn't do anything and generally in india there is uh, not much of importance uh, at least to a indian coal firing that is so2 so2 there is no reduction done we have not done anything to reduce so2 as somebody asked this morning uh we have modernized the turbine now that turbine will live for another 20 years with some periodic maintenance the boiler also will uh, be able to support it and we have reduced the total auxiliary power consumption this is in spite of coal degradation uh probably having to increase some capacity on the mills so means extra firing means extra uh, mill capacity and then extra mill power consumption so but in spite of all that we have actually reduced the overall power consumption so uh, this was our client requirement uh, increase it what is the time set and complete this well i think it started uh, sometime in 2012 we were given the award and uh, more than a year has passed engineering was done and they have given the shutdown to us there is a slide i think uh, somewhere here on the schedule so it's actually 2012 and they are expecting 2014 that's the kind of time uh you stop get data then again start that goes on for some time and then material ordering is there uh, turbine you are also talking about turbine work so that part is there we took about 12 months for the detail engineering it is not like a new unit everything is all material including material right you uh, you can see the slide there uh, i brought up this slide for you only Uh, it's about uh, 12 months of uh, detail engineering material order in 10 months manufacturing completion in 17 months and then we have a shutdown of about 5 6 months by which uh, we should make the unit ready and then we have to do the uh, pg tests uh, in about 3 uh, more months and then we uh, do the reliability and then the pg test so it's a matter of about 27 months totally so uh, we were asked to uh, yes as i said it is 2 3 4 5 kilowatt that uh, we have given as a guarantee as a unit heat rate whereas we saw in the other slide that it was 2800 so that's a straight 15% reduction in the uh, combustion uh, in the uh, increase in efficiency and the reduction in the uh, footprint now we have actually shown uh, that we will be able to reduce the power consumption to 13 megawatt instead of 13.5 uh, and uh, life extension what they guaranteed wanted they have guaranteed as part of this r&d we have done a plate and uh, super heater upgrade why we do this is uh, plate and uh, generally as you can see if you can see this picture a little bit more keenly 
uh, what happens is uh, the tubes will kind of uh, tend to uh, because of the cycling that it goes through it will kind of the tubes will tend to one go from away from the center line towards one this side some this side and then there is the first surface the uh, flue gas will actually see when it is leaving the furnace that means cooling as long as it's in the furnace it's hot so now it's starting to cool this is the coolest first surface that it would see other than the of course the furnace itself now when that happens it would tend to with that ex peculiar shape forming the uh, slag would tend to ash will kind of build up there then form a big slag in severe extreme cases it will bridge the entire the plate and to plate and gap will be almost uh, more than half a meter to a meter that pitch entire pitch will actually be filled by ash and it then slag and then the gas will not actually be able to go that's the worst extreme in this unit we didn't have so much but uh, why we do that uh, modification is if you can see the bottom portion uh, you can see some black lines there upgrade means you are in material upgradation no sir actually we didn't do any material upgrade we have maintained the same material maybe uh, a certain portion Uh, right, right. That's uh, a, a, a fraction, one or two mm. That's all. It's not more than that. But what I'm talking about is uh, the bottom portion is not kind of uh, spacer is for maintaining the space. But then the bottom is left free. Some of the tubes would go outside this way from the center line. Some might go inside this way. so it's free to kind of bend off from uh, the last held point so those portions will kind of become and that's very hot so it's going to uh, go through that experience so the reason why we dip that bottom uh, it's called dipping membraneing or dipping why we do that is uh, to intentionally increase the metal temperature there the fin at the middle the temperature would be large higher than the tube temperature already and then that will result in slowly not letting the ash actually settle there it will melt and fall off into the furnace hopper so that's the idea of uh, doing the membrane tipping and then the panels burner panels it's a lonox burner with a tiled refractory throat and uh, if you can see how things were before on the left hand side and the bottom and uh, on the right hand side you can see how things are after uh, this is not this boiler this is in an some other boiler which had uh, a similar uh, modification done you will see that uh, the slagging is uh, not there that's because of the refractory tiling that we do and the cooling portion that would happen would not happen and then the heat is given back to the flame and then it won't settle the the cold uh, portions that are around because of the tubes which go around will be now covered with a refractory tiling so that will give the heat back to the ash and then it won't form any slag around the burner what modification is are done economy economy sir we just added a uh, one bundle basically uh, increase in the heat surface yes that is that is a space constraint and what well uh, most units particularly uh, the wood companies that you come across will keep for temperature supply there is a space restriction okay not increase the heat yes we have also uh, seen that and in fact uh, one of the projects that we did uh, we had some constraints yes it will be a problem then you have to think of other solutions but in this case you have allocated space for future that the this given additional regulator surface however in case in the irrigating surface yes uh, if you see okay sir in any design that we do uh, okay so if you can draw your attention to uh, the yellow tube there after the blue the reheater i think uh, that's the superheater that's a superheater we have in this case it's a no cinborian so okay i'll talk about this design the blue thing that you see there is the final reheater 
and the green one is the final super eater and the pink magenta color that you see is uh, the uh, black one yeah it is the yeah it is either the uh, it's the uh, it's the reeater okay so that's a reeater call hmm That's the primary super eater on the right hand side. Yes. So basically, uh, the spaces are there. The, the that space which is available, the vertical portion, you can always create one more loop, either for the super eater or reeater. You can create one more loop, and you again, are, again, support it from. You are increasing number of guys. Yes. That means you are, you have to change the entire header. No, no, no. Uh, I am cutting off somewhere, yes. creating an extra loop, and then joining it to the original line. So. We add a loop there. Now, how much of it is effective is another question because the gas is taking it up. But we do uh, factor in that when we do the design and uh, add the surface. Now, there are uh, sometimes possibility of increasing diameter. Also, that is also going to help. In certain zones, you can increase the diameter and get some more extra area. But then you'll have to the velocity will be compromised. And then we will have to take suitable actions to ensure that uh, the metal temperature is not uh, going. So, now as a designer, we have this challenge always: uh, where to add, how to add. In this case, the economizer kind of helped us uh, regain uh, some of the heat. Uh, there is a capacity increase first of all. We have to increase. Uh, see that, and then because it's a turbine upgrade. Generally, the reheater inlet steam quantity will go up. The HP is very efficient now, so there is a reheater area increase also that would automatically come in with all these modifications. Generally, and then you have got uh, uh, increased duty. Now you have got uh, a challenge of trying to improve efficiency. So you add some heat recovery, add the economizer, and bring in. And then you can't do that too much because you're also having some inlet condition of air heater which has to be maintained because units in application still the consultant had lot of questions on the capability of this burner. They were asking questions even recently. We were to answer some things. Milling system. It is an email that you see there, the bottom uh, which I mentioned few minutes ago. Uh, so we did a dynamic classifier. We added dynamic classifier to it. And uh, the PF piping, we uh, replace all the. Oh, we added VRBs, and then uh, <coughs> finally, what we had achieved was increase the uh, output of the mill. That was also there by the, that we did by and uh, increasing the number of balls. The 8.5 E9 was made into 8.5 E10. So that was the idea there. There will be a small shift in the radius. Of grinding, and then that would actually enhance the capacity of milling when you increase the number of, reduce the ball size and increase number of balls. Sir, milling system. Right, sir. The existing method is alcohol chain powder, sir. Alcohol chain powder or gram attitude? Uh, I'm not sure whether it was a gram. I don't think it was a gram attitude. It must be a best of feeder or something. Yes, sir. Nowadays, around one hundred. Yes, sir. The alcohol chain powder changing to the in between. Mother inlet, feeder outlet. That is mill inlet. Only five thirty three mm. That is what is planned. Right. Uh, in such cases, in such cases, I think the table feeder is a very good solution. Uh, we have not been able to buy that for any unit, but we have. Uh, that is supplied by Feister company called Feister. Uh, the uh, Indian company's name is something else. I don't forget. But what does it mean? Do you remember? Transway, that's the company. Sorry. Right. So, Transway uh, is uh, selling that technology, which is very good in such situations. Can be of great use. And there are some units working in the country with uh, such a situation, and they are working very well actually. Sir, yes, sir. What is the capacity increase for mill after adding this? Uh uh, roughly about seven percent, five to seven percent increase in the uh, capacity of the mill. I have not remember the numbers per se. It was in that order, less than ten percent. Because of that. Uh
a particular load? Did any like the number of working wheels come down? Like you are uh, specifying like the num uh, the auxiliary power consumption has come down. Was this the reason? Like did this attribute to that? Well, uh, no. The auxiliary power consumption only would go up uh, with exactly respect to the auxiliary power consumption coming yeah. down is not from that angle. I said it will increase. This has only increased. How it has come down is by doing the R and M on the ducting, reducing the air ingress, improving the ESP uh, performance by reducing, uh, increasing, reducing the power consumption there by reducing the ID fan power itself by handling lesser gas to the same megawatt, two ton megawatt uh, when it gives. So the air ingress is gone. Basically, you would have had 40 percent, 50, 40. At the ID fan, you would have had 40 percent excess. And that would have maxed out. The fan would not give anything more. Stably, it will be operating at some point beyond which they don't try. So it, the unit was de to 18, 180 megawatt. So bringing back to 2 ton, that's the extra air, basically. We are having very lengthy deck. That is from air period outlet to ESP inlet. Yeah. That was originally designed for uh, Indian coal with uh, 34 day, 34 percentage ash. Okay. Nowadays it is 40. Right. So, that is increasing, that 40% uh, ash content is increasing the erosion in our duct. In your duct. Which unit is that, sir? It's made to thermal power station. Made to thermal power station, okay. Your CMD analysis will help any certain things? Well, uh, you don't have to do a CFT analysis to overcome an erosion problem of a gas duct, I think personally so. But uh, now, you have to uh, look at it in this fashion. Which portion? There's a, which portion you are saying? Air heater to the ESP inlet. Yes, yes. Air heater to inlet. Okay. Where is the erosion, sir? Not in the bend. bend in the bend, bend, obviously, bend. right? In the bend yeah. where it is lifting up. So the higher erosion, the higher for the same velocities are, I would say the unit is old. So you would be operating at neck breaking uh, excess. Increase the uh, ash content. And the laws that uh, the rules that the designer would have had in those days would have been for a lower, higher velocity, uh, sorry, for a higher velocity, higher? then you are actually experiencing much higher velocity. So uh, that's the situation. You don't want even a duct, particularly at best. There is no, even there is no space for increasing the diameter or uh, something. Being or something like well, there are solutions. You can make some uh, erosion prevention. You can have. Uh, that portion which is, uh, we can look at it, sir, if you can uh, give us the opportunity, we can take a look. We will ask our service department actually what's happening and we can give the solution. There are various ways. You can uh, make a CFD analysis and find out whether it is, where it is, uh, erosion is high. Okay, we can do that. We can do that, but it will be very expensive. So that we can have some uh, different it plan. Plan. Basically, to solve that problem, I think we can do it. We will be able to do it with the CFD analysis itself. But if you want, the situation warrants, you are not able to comprehend why it is happening, uh, we will come to you. Usually, some portion, that hopper or something would have gotten filled up, then you would have had a small space, and then, like, you know, the which is settling there would be picked up and hit, like, and it would be not, like, continuous. It would be, like, you know, when it reaches a particular velocity, it will fly and and then that will go off, then again it will build. Normally, so, the, the, the higher build Yes, so we have to see where exactly and then probably make a decision. Uh, if we have the opportunity, very costly affair. CFD is not uh, a simple affair. It will consume a lot of hours. So, but we can solve that problem if you like. Yes. Now we have to see we have if we see the ducting we can probably and there is no chance of modifying doing any modifications there. It's very tight. Within three months, we are high demand course 100%.
we are unable to maintain a pressure. Because of that, we are reducing the load. Construction of aerator. We changed the total aerator. We modularized it. Additional black means? We put one more extra. Basket. No, it's not a basket, sir. That's what I'm saying. If you see the picture right hand side bottom, there are tubular aerators. Yeah, it's yeah. not a regenerative aerator. 
So we put one more block there on the right hand side. Uh, we had space constraints, but still managed to do it. That was to, as I said, we have extra coal firing. So, so for the drying requirement meeting, we had put a echo. So the gas temperature fell, and we have to bring back something. Not much, but we have uh, also improved the efficiency. Uh, reinstated to where it was. So that was the success we had by adding. And then we modularized That was the best part. Direction, inspection, maintenance, all that is much, much faster in this design. Uh, customer liked this concept very much. It is going to bring down the direction time from three months to like three weeks. That's a big change. In the existing uh, housing uh, uh, Yes, sir. It is within the existing framework of steel. Supports are all remaining same. The tubular, the basically the uh, the tube plates, tubes, it will be arranged in such a way that it will be modularized. That's all. It will be all modules rather than having a continuous continuous arrangement. Other miscellaneous scope we had was so chain seals here and there, expansion points of factory, insulation makeup. Uh, air flow measurement devices, hash handling system, I think uh, some like to like replacement, some uh, improvements. Firefighting was to ensure that uh, we were meeting the current current uh, requirements in the uh, <coughs> industry. Uh, and then we also had uh, replaced the dosing and the sampling system which was not uh, working anymore properly. So that's a summary of what changes were made. Uh, that's not the milling plant, that's looking like a different mill. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's an email. So finally what we got is uh, we reduce the reduce the uh, NOx, we reduce the SPM particle matter, we reduce the, uh, uh, increase the uh, efficiency, brought the heat rate down, we uh, enhance the life, that's the most important one we want to highlight. By changing the ESP electronics alone, whether there is any improvement in uh, particular... I, I think in this case they replace a TR sets, entire, all the uh, internals. internals I would say most of the ESP is replaced. What will you keep in a ESP, sir? Probably some portion of hopper and things like that will be available. The rest all has to be totally replaced. But yes, uh, coming with that, the advancement, uh, some electronics. I don't know whether the power management system was added. I do not know, I don't remember in this case whether it was added. I have to check, but we didn't do that directly ourselves, so I'm not sure. But maybe they have added some uh, power optimization systems to reduce the power consumption. Yes, I think so, because that's why we could finally reduce the power consumption totally. Is there any technique to clean the water one, outside, outside water one? What was this? Water one tubes from the outside. Yeah, outside. Yeah, so we go for a uh, high percent jet or uh, sand plastic, something like that? Sir, it's your take, but uh, the Germans, Clyde Bergman is a very good solution. Uh, water cannons, which works well, very complicated. Now, what you would uh, get as a benefit has to be weight. How much time it will take to weigh uh, pay back the investment you have to uh, see and then you can make a decision. But the technique works. It is not like uh, earlier there was uh, not the... How it works now is basically the furnace water walls, there are flux meters kept on the air. They know uh, the... It's all program. The gun, the cannon actually takes you to places where it has to clean and it is a continuous affair. Keeps on cleaning and uh, keeps the surface. And uh, the, when the ash is kind of clean, the slag is removed and when it is getting close to the water wall, the heat pickup will start increasing and when it reaches a particular rate of increase, they will stop the water to that area. Means they want now the ash to build up. So, that will safeguard the uh, the fin and the tube. So, they have done a lot of research, but it's a very costly affair, sir. Very, very costly affair. So, you may be very happy with your walkers doing their job. We are planning for uh, if you are sand, sand plastic. Yeah, yeah, I am not, not Sand plastic. <laughs>
thank him. No problem. Uh, I think uh, because I think uh, we'll have another. But it's about 10, 12 slides. Should I summarize? If they are happy, in fact, it will 3:30. We can go to the other session. Now, if you don't have questions, another 10 slides on. Okay. Okay. Then we'll go for the. We'll go for the. It's a regular photograph and here is the uh, before and after medication and the picture was not very clear, the tile the refractory mm -hmm. and how uh, it will be after you do the modification with the tile refractory, how uh, the... Uh, we are giving a nozzle shape to design the throat, uh, throat, I see around the throat and the yeah. tubes are come. Right. Those tubes which are immediately going to cool will attract the ash uh, to slag there. Adi illama, if you put a tile refractory, it will re-radiate the heat and then no slagging is possible. That's the essence of what is the... Uh, and this one is for... I uh, think I mentioned some special designs that uh, our design has. The whole designs we were having in the Mari arrangement, all these operators or readers would end in a header like this. Instead of that, if you can kind of uh, have stub headers, if you have, can have stub headers and the tubes entering, ending here, and then you only have a pipe. This is the large thickness of the tube, in the pipe. So the fatigue, the uh, amount of uh, creep that it would have experience is much lesser. And uh, the stresses that it would experience is much lesser. Uh, the tubes are all very, very uh, close and then they are very, very high uh, thickness uh, headers and then in between tubes there can be tube temperature variations. All tubes will not have the same steam temperature. So that can result in uh, improved life. And this is a erosion protection. What we do as erosion protection for certain areas in the uh, second pass. Water will uh, impede the second bus. And this is that area. And if you can see this area and this area. And uh, in getting, uh, how is the uh, extra area Enga provide provide? This area, you can simply add one more loop here. So that is how we that manage that. Uh, now that is a super heater. It is on the left layer, the very heater. Then this is from actually from some other presentation. That's the uh, typical mill upgrade. I think you could have mentioned Bananigra. Open bottom classifier could have mentioned Bananigra. Mentioned about open bottom classifier. So this is another thing. Earlier one had a skirt arrangement that is now uh, removed. These are all the upgrades. And uh, this is a picture about uh, the modular concept. This is actually a picture. What you see here, this was supplied to uh, Sutherland project in America. This editor was supplied actually. But I'll send you much more details. So, uh, okay, this is on the turbine. Not much uh, uh, that I know of in the turbine, but I know that there is some turbine uh, reap deficiency or the reduced steam consumption. So, these six can be accommodated in the original uh, Ah, yes. Huh? They know the LMZ turbine. Hmm. So, these people have uh, experience in working with that design. So, they have uh, done that. Actually, they have done that. This is done by Skoda, our, uh, our company, which is Skoda as part of our company. So these were the modifications, LPIP turbine replacement, uh, oil uh, system upgrade, overhauling the governors, uh, ESVs, 
control valves, drains uh, and extraction system refurbishment. So almost entire, uh, including controls, all the things, instruments, controls. Governing systems pass we are supplying for LM is it? Governing systems pass. I am not sure uh, where they got it from. We are not supplying the spares. We would have gone to the OEM uh, probably to get that. But we have done the refurbishment. And the uh, director tower totally replaced and because it was not probably working very well. And uh, hangers, critical piping, some changes. And supports for uh, the critical piping. Insulation, of course, was, uh, of course, when you work on these, you have to anyway change. And BFP also, they have changed uh, it to some energy efficient cartridges. I don't know which company pump was it, but uh, they have done this also. So, so that's the total umbrella of changes in the bundle. So, this is the timeline you asked, about 27 months for the entire affair. Maybe it will end up to be 29 months, but it is almost like uh, two and a half years from where you start, uh, you have done considerable bit and with uh, less than 50 percent of uh, a total new boiler. So this uh, a boiler which is working in Gujarat, uh, Ahmedabad Generating Company, na? Uh, it's a lower pressure 130 bar, uh, 110 megawatt uh, boiler, which we have increased to 120 capacity has been increased. Uh, and then turbine also was kind of modified and the modification uh, alert, <coughs> we have also made some changes to the reheater mainly in that boiler in terms of pressure part. Otherwise, they were all like-to-like -like replacement in that unit. So, originally how it was designed, boiler basic parameters when it was designed in 84 and 88 and that's a BHL unit, corner fed. I was mentioning to you also. So, uh, we didn't have luckily to anything to do with the burners itself. We didn't do uh, touch the burning system, combustion system. We were asked to do the boiler per se and uh, also the turbine revamp. And uh, it's a very successful project. The boiler results were exactly as predicted or better, slightly better. Efficiency tests are all over and then we have come out of the, almost coming out of the site after the commercial uh, closure of uh, the contract. So uh, we also did a RLA study RLA study means for right. the piping, piping all the cycle pipings, main uh, steam superheater reheater piping around we did uh, RLA piping as uh, RLA. You are approved uh, IPR uh, with Well we either do it ourselves or employ somebody but uh, we can employ somebody and do it. Yes, the challenges were, that's the drawing we got, to do the R&R, customer gave the drawing. A few drawings like that, so it's very normal uh, thing, r and is attractive, you can easily come to the solution, provide the solutions, you know, the boiler, where it is working, how it is working, but then uh, you will have such things, you will have such unpredictable things. In Bandel we had some issues like, those tubes were all BS tubes. Now you have to marry them with asthma tubes. The tolerances are positive there. Negative, uh, the tolerances are different from what the asthma tolerances are. So it was a very difficult thing. Likewise, if you are marrying something, until that point, if you are now declaring a different design temperature for this, now there is a problem. Now the IBR may say, CIB may say you have to change that other part also, that piping also. So, how you convince, how you manage that is an issue. You will have to put 5, 45 degrees until point, some point. We, if you see the super heat temperature or read temperature, it is 545 after the R&M. That 5 degrees, at some, from some certain point, it is only 540. Now, if somebody doesn't note all this, it is a fine, but otherwise it can become an issue. Scope issues can be there. Non-clarity. Somebody may say, where are all applicable? Now, why are all applicable can be very difficult uh, when you actually go to the sea, site and see and then you learn that there is a much larger scope to deliver. 
and then you will have to go and stand in front of the customer and beg him for a waiver or extra payment. Sometimes it will come, sometimes it will not. The in this case we had to actually increase the read area by almost thirty percent. We increased, and uh, that was again, as I said, uh, because of the enhanced performance of. Uh, no, I won't say that. Basically, enhanced performance and a revised HPD, HPD, a more efficient cycle. The extractions were less from the HP turbine, and uh, read flow was higher. And uh, we had to uh, do some compromises uh, in certain areas. Increase the diameters, greater velocity reductions were there. Finally, we have uh, supplied the super reheaters. It's working well, no issues. And uh, but then these are the challenges that one can come across when you start doing the R and D. So for the OEMs, it will be good to preserve the drawings as long as the boiler is there, because uh, you never know when you will need it. And in fact, collecting the data and keeping a log of data, operating data, is also a very useful thing for uh, the OEM. Sorry, the, not the OEMs, the operating uh, community. So, uh, what we want to summarize here is that uh, you are not looking at an improvement from where the boiler was originally operating. It was designed for 85 percent. Now we are giving 86. That's not what it is. In most R and Ms. You will see that the efficiency already has gone down five percent. Five percent of out of eighty is not five percent. It is more than a five percent. So eighty five is more than five percent. So like that, you have something for the turbine. So in effect, net effect, you can actually reduce your coal consumption for the same what you produce by uh, at least ten to fifteen percent. Scope will always exist in most R and M cases, and you are also reducing somewhere on the power consumption itself. So that's also going to add to the cycle. So it's a simple thing that uh, this needs focus. R and M needs focus as much as new builds, which we all we also do new builds. We also do very high super criticals, but we think these also need a very good focus because this market uh, is huge. There is a lot of units in India which are old, aging. I know uh, some of us, uh, all the other colleagues that are with me also know. We have been talking of Badarpur ever since we were in this company. We have been talking since 2007. Now Badarpur has still not happened. So this is the negative. Okay, Badarpur. Uh, we went to first uh, site. Uh, our people went in 2008 or 9. There was detailed work done in. There was a tender and then detailed work done. Then the project was shelved. Now re-tendering. And then now they have done something NTPC. They are running it. And then. Uh, The problem is they can't lose that unit. They have to have some other unit to supply power before they lose this unit. Otherwise, Delhi is in trouble. So that is why they are not doing it. But then, genuine things can happen and stop the R and M also. But if the uh, if there is focus, the government can plan that and ensure R and M can be made available for such units also. And they can bring 15-20 percent efficiency increase. Looks like. Without any improvement uh, in the cycle pressure or anything like that, it was reinstating. Where and the by the other things you are you are definitely having a reliable, very reliable power generation. You can depend on that unit as a very good one, and uh, that's a good thing with NTPC. NTPC when they take a unit take over, they really do a good job and really upkeep it well and then run it very well. So you have got a more reliability of Put more life into that boiler, and then you have uh, more power generation, increased capacity, and efficiency. So all this would result to lesser emission. Uh, that's something very, very uh, clear uh, understanding. So we think uh, e energy efficient R and M is a very good solution, and uh, it can quickly increase. We just saw, as you asked, two and a half years was a time frame when somebody thought of it, conceptualized to. uh making the r and m actually happen it can all happen very fast at fraction of a cost and uh, also improve the efficiency and we have such units in abundance so the focus is all that is needed uh, from the government on those units also as much as they do on uh, the new units 
where NTPC is now only focusing on supercritical, they are talking about ultra, they are uh, very focused on increasing the cycle efficiency, which is good, well taken. But there should be focus here also to upgrade and uh, do more r and as well. So we will go to any questions that you have, uh, I am happy to answer, then I would like to also join the other sessions like you uh, in the other rooms. So any questions? You are having a specific problem. Yes, sir. There is a the, the difference in temperature between right and left, outlet temperature of reheater. Uh -huh. Yeah, that will always exist in a corner fed unit because the ball will shift to the left or right and it's a very common feature, sir. Always ball, uh, ball will not shift, no. Actually, normally <laughs> No, the ball may actually be there, but then more of heat transfer, more of gas might be actually passing through one side. There is an unbalance. That's a negative as much as I know about that technology. Little negative. But then it has got very good... Uh, Combustion efficiency and very good turbulent furnace. Instead, is always higher. Uh, you design the same boiler. We have done it in the past. When not a PC fired boiler. We I know of a CFB boiler where uh, there is uh, one boiler uh, which is, which has got basically uh, a superheater within the furnace. A CFB boiler with a superheater within the furnace. It's an intermediate superheater. Two typical units working in Indalco, not Indalco, Indal, Hirakud, I think. So, that place, the reader, two units are there. One unit would give uh, on one side very high temperature than the other side. So, why? It's all designed same. Now, is it this becoming there? Uh, no. It is that fan, that furnace. It's uh, something which you cannot have control on. And that's a very common affair with uh, this thing, uh, the reheaters. And I think there would be ambient, uh, sorry, like an ample margin in the uh, metal temperatures they would have considered hopefully. And that would have resulted in uh, the tubes being fine. They would have upgraded the material. What material is that? Uh, this T91. 91. So, reheater. Reheater. Uh, okay. So, not reheater. Okay, okay. Yeah, the final, final reheaters facing the furnace. So, yes, it is bound to happen and uh, it is a very common affair that we hear with uh, the uh, corner fairing. Whether it is permitted, we can have no other go. Well, there is no other go, sir. As long as the unit runs reliably and it is able to produce steam, yes, uh, the negative side, if you look at it, uh, the same header is getting differential steam temperatures and that's something which is not so great but then it is oh, it is again reheater very big diameter and very high thickness so that way it doesn't sound great to me but then there was one slide where we saw what is actual stress and where what is the margin so that will actually put things in perspective if you are actually operating well below the allowable stress and if the super heater header is still, the reheater header is still not facing so much of stress, it is still okay. But then that's a negative. But then there are many positives with that technology. Uh, maybe you can check with BHL on seeing how you can bias the uh, the other way around. You talk about efficiency in RMA but what about in new boilers? New boilers, we are already there. saw Mundra, you got Sipat. We are very, very, very high uh, efficiency, low heat rate uh, units. Uh, similar, measures, where, similar measures can you take? What are the measures which this specifically takes? How you can increase efficiency in short? Okay, then we will see what are the what are the areas where efficiency can uh, be improved first. Generally, where uh, efficiency can be improved is uh, you can, again it's a compromise between carbon loss and excess air. You have to try and keep uh, as much as possible the NOx high, I shouldn't say this, uh, so that the combustion is proper. 
if you don't have an aux uh, limitation probably you can play with uh, very high even in the case of indian coal there are other ways even with the aux contained you can have a better mill and then have a better carbon loss but have the carbon loss as much as as low as possible and then target something like 130 degrees back end temperature that's the lowest one can go with the normal 35 40 degrees ambient you cannot go lower than that so uh, with that done and the excess air you try to keep as minimum as possible what else can one do rest is you will decide by the fuel what's those general excess air values excess air values would actually uh, be something like 18 to 20% percent generally so we can work with 18% percent certain cases Sir, generally is a rule of thumb about 20% at economizer sir what was the carbon loss you have observed sir? in this plant you are running plant we can on, i can only say that uh, we have uh, last i remember has heard from somebody who was involved in the sipat uh, the uh, testing was that whatever guarantees we gave we were probably off by only like 0.1% or 0.05% that was uh, all uh, and uh, it was pretty high efficiency what we guaranteed was very very good and carbon loss uh, you can uh, achieve 0.7 to 1% with a lot of care does in mind which technology is on the steam side or water side depends on how much you want to target you can you can try to target higher but everything you have to have a compromise like right? to increase excess air you can reduce uh, you can increase the combustion sir what is your stand on this uh, percent take competitive market like where efficiency is like the figures which uh, players are quoting in this market So what is your like? What is your feel about that? When we are going for this is this uh, competition has been like uh, going viral. Like the figures we have been seeing, we have been seeing some tenders. Whether it is achievable, some tenders you are you would have lost or you would have made a study on that. No, we don't lease uh, tenders because of that. They load the boiler manufacturer who had uh, quoted less efficiency, but I don't know what uh, how much we lost. or how much we won for on different contracts but generally uh, you have to be you cannot keep margins simply you cannot keep ample margins and quote and then win a order because there is heavy loading for uh, the efficiency so that is the only thing i can say and this but everyone is following and that's why you are seeing the efficiency is up it is not like previous years or 15 20 years ago when you can uh, have uh, like some order you would have lost like say some order you would have participated in some bit and you would have lost so the uh, competitor would have won you would have made a study like whether it is achievable or not that efficiency what was your feel about that like we would have found like some some figures are not achievable like when we made a study some sort of when we when you say when we uh, where are you from you are from bhc okay so uh, what did you analyze or what did you some figures were uh, like we found it to be unachievable like after uh, without margins and all so that can be a strategy is it mm, yes sir like so uh, strategies are not discussed in public so very well right it is about survival and honestly i don't know what strategy we follow before which boiler but the essence is you said it right everyone knows this this is market information you cannot win contracts with ample margin near back 1% 0.7% very very difficult to win with uh, such high margins you can have uh, there are a lot of ways you know as a boiler manufacturer you know how to play with it like you can you, you can decide to invest or take a risk you can decide to invest on something to improve the efficiency but then uh, there is common sense like you try to bring the back end temperature down reduce your excess air but when you do that the carbon loss will increase so it's a compromise on how much confidence you have 
in understanding the coal in understanding what the mill will give in understanding what your burner will do these three important things but all the ma manipulatable uh, figures when the customer is specifying also some figures they are uh, achieved not achievable figures they are going to make customer this is a thing so all the manipulation uh, so the manipulation is intentional they wanted to win it some they would put it in the price some they would put it in efficiency so ultimate it's a strategy you know ultimate sufferer is customer <laughs> sufferer uh, yeah, uh, sir <laughs> no no sufferer uh, no no <laughs> sufferer is finally the customer yes. the loading that you talk about is only for the immediate uh, future but on the for the entire life NTPC is very smart. They will take for 25 years. They are very, very smart in loading that also. But um, anyway, loading is not the issue. Getting equipment cheap is not the issue. You are actually wasting uh, firing. But then they will improve. They will do something to improve it. There is only so much uh, that is possible. Sir, in one slide you mentioned that the reason the surface was added. When the surface was added, pressure drop into a Yes, very, very good question. So, yes. So, luckily, uh, we had opportunity to also increase diameter somewhere. We increase the diameter. And when you increase the diameter, like I just said now, we have to pay a price for that. Maybe upgrade of some material. Uh, but you should not do that like endlessly. You know, it was the the uh, the uh, Revised heat balance diagram will come out like that. This turbine was changed. No, the turbine was not changed. The improvements were made. It was made more efficient. Any flow will be the same only. For particular turbine. Hmm. And it's a design for a particular turbine. No, no, no. That is no improvement. If the flow is same, there is no efficiency improvement. In what way it was improved? I want to know that. In what way it is the overall cycle uh, which we have to <laughs> discuss now. Turbine, I told you, no. I think... Uh, what was told here is improvement in the blade uh, profiles and improvement in the seals, which result in losses. Seals is losses. The other one is improvement in the performance itself. For certain amount of steam, you get uh, the same amount of power, same amount of uh, mechanical conversion to mechanical energy. You are seeing that the enter, they have worked with the entropy and velocity distribution and then they have achieved it. Minimizing losses. Uh, minimizing losses, yes, you can say that. Yes, true. Minimizing the losses is improvement in efficiency, always. So, other than that, uh, any question? So, if I answer, I have answered your question. Just one add, to add. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. 
So that is also one of the parameters where you look at. If you want to make a study of the slagging and falling, you have to look at the ash transition temperature, ash chemical constants. Exactly at this density. No, that's already that been done. It's already been done. But when you say of the carbon losses, whether you are getting so much of carbon in the bottom ash, so much of carbon in the unburnt carbon in the fly ash, then you say that my efficiency is gone down. It doesn't because of the these parameters. It's also the reactivity. How much time in the milliseconds, microseconds, how much time the coal is able to release the energy and immediately come into or become ash and then go from the this one boiler. So that we need to look. Those that information is common by less time. Any common less time is here maintained. It depends upon because suppose you know uh, a new problem is that you are getting uh, imported coal. You are blending the coal. What ratio are going to blending? We say blending is actually not blending, we are just mixing it. Blending is a totally yeah. different concept. Problem. There is no provision in any point of power point to blend the coal. It will have to be blending of uh, the pulverized fuel itself. Because uh, uh, what uh, I have come across uh, reading somebody's article is that when you put Indonesian coal and Indian coal, Indian Asian coal and then the Indian coal won't be ground and you will be thinking you will get so much carbon loss, actually you would have increased. Uh, or you would not have got the right uh, reduction. You put so, it down as you are dealing with the uh, force having up to 50, 52 percent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or your uh, mass on the air rate basis is around 15 percent sometimes. Uh, and its reactivity is very, very high. And uh, that you need to have proper blend of the Indian bad coal so that you will strike yeah. a balance and that works better in your boiler. So high that it can just burn by itself in the stock, in the yard. Again, there is a density separation. In the boiler. Sir, one more question. Bottom ash temperature, did you measure at any site? Like, do some operating boiler, bottom ash temperature. Why, why should I measure? Sir, uh, the uh, is, no, sir, for calibrating this is for okay, the yeah. permission guarantees. Okay, so, okay, for the guarantee process, how much would it make a difference? 1100 or 1200 or? That might be. 4 third decimal maybe. So. No, have you, like, Sir, well, we have done. I have, I have not personally done, gone about doing it, but our definitely our uh, testing team would have gone through it. Mundra, Sipat, they would have done it. I'm sure they would have mentioned if uh, four point PTC four asks for it, they would have to you have to measure the temperature, then you do it. Sir, estimation support is Sipat is uh, definitely uh, it's all over. Long, long, sir. Long ago. That was the first uh, unit. And then uh, Mundra was working for uh, quite some time. Mundra is working for the uh, past six months, six or eight months without any issues. And the beauty is, uh, it was designed for Indian, uh, this Indonesian coal. And then I think a different coal is being fired now. And uh, it's working very well. It's a corner fired unit, uh, Alstom design. It's working. 4,000 megawatt available. We had actually, the boiler was ready long ago. The transmission lines were not ready. Sipath is working. Working properly, no issues. Minor teething issues and new, anyone, everyone was new to supercritical, so some issues were there. No reportable issues from there. Right, you can achieve lesser also. You can achieve more, you can achieve less. Anything. 10 to 15. We re substitute that in the formula, you will get it. It will be more. The, the carbon in ash will be more for the same percentage of carbon loss if you are looking at a very high GCV or low ash coal. High GCV, low ash coal, the carbon in ash content will appear very big. Carbon loss may be still lower because of the GCV being high and the ash percentage itself is being, being very less. Okay. Thank you.